just have it's good to have everybody here this morning. Bob is uh, uh, not feeling well this morning, and, and so I'm uh, his replacement, so to speak. So, good morning. It's good to have everyone with us this morning. Uh, if you're uh, visiting with us, we're glad that you've uh, chosen to spend this time with us. And if uh, if you fill out a yellow visitors card, which is on the back of the, the pew in front of you. Uh, and you don't know what to do with it, when you exit the auditorium, there's three exits back here, and there should be a little box you can uh, uh, put it in that box back there so we can have a, a record of your attendance. If you're watching with us on the, uh, uh, on the internet, we're glad to have you also, and uh, if you, uh, uh, we will have a 5, 3, 30 p.m. Sa uh, uh, service this afternoon too, and you're welcome to enjoy us, uh, join us back then. Yesterday we had a beautiful day for work day. Had uh, I count, I did a head count of about 45 at one time. I don't know whether there's any more or, or less than that, but uh, it was a lot of people moving around. Had a good, good time. Had a good breakfast, and we had a good work day, and, and accomplished a lot of good things. There's around the building. You'll probably notice some changes that's been made, and um, especially over in front of the uh, front of the office area. Those hedges was has uh, been pulled up and 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 uh, disposed of. Uh, we all got a little dirty, and we uh, still had a lot of fun anyway, so we had a good time. <clears throat> I've got several announcements I'm going to be, be making, uh, or make sure that you uh, pick up a, um, a handout which has uh, Gary's outline of his lesson on there and also some other important announcements on that, and, and uh, I'm going to be making, uh, after uh, later on in the service, I'm going to be making some, uh, some more announcements that uh, will keep us up to date on what's going on. Uh, in, in our church family here. Let's bow for a word of prayer and then we'll begin our morning service. Our Father in heaven, we're again thankful for another opportunity to come here in the, this morning to uh, meet together in our class, classrooms and study your word. And we, we're thankful for all of our teachers that teach and uh, get preparate, make preparations to teach in all the classes. We, we're thankful for even the, uh, the, the smallest child that's uh, a student all the way up to our, our oldest uh, folks here, and we pray that uh, the things that's been presented this morning will uh, be uh, synced in, into our hearts and we'll be aware of the things that we do each day of our lives that affect the, uh, the lives not only of our families, but the, the, family, the people that we come in contact with. And be a, a source, we can always be a source of, a source of outreach to those we uh, come in contact with each day. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to meet here this morning and, and enjoy the, uh, the, um, uh, the time that we spend together in fellowship, especially the time that we can get together to raise our voices in songs. And we pray that we would listen to the, to the words of the song so that it can speak to us and help us to be more appreciative of our life that we have with you and the relationship that we have with you. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have to come to you in prayer as a church family and to lift up our prayers to you so that we can uh, speak to you and communicate to you the things that are, are on our hearts and so that you can uh, help us in the things that we, that we uh, that need, need help. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we uh, have to listen to another lesson from your word that's going to be delivered by Gary, and we pray that you'd be with him as he uh, delivers his lesson this morning and, and uh, help us to uh, have open minds and open hearts and be receptive to your word so that we can grow, continue to grow in our knowledge and, and wisdom of your word. Father, we are also thankful for the opportunity that we have to come together on this first day of the week uh, to meet together and to just for a few minutes reflect on, <clears throat> on the cross and what it means to each one of us when we meet uh, and partake of the Lord's Supper. We are thankful for the, the, the sacrifice that you were willing to give in our son, in your son, to that, uh, so that we might have hope spending eternity with you. And Father, we also thank you for the opportunity to show our appreciation for all the things that you have given to us in doing, in doing so uh, as we make our contributions for the work of the church here and not only here in this community but worldwide and those that are in the missionary fields. We thank you so much for that opportunity that we have to give and to show our appreciation for those folks. Father, again, we thank you for the love that you have for each one of us this morning. Thank you for the love that you have for this church family that worships here at Sowell Road. Father, as we enter into this worship service and we focus our minds and attentions on, on you and your Son and our Savior, we pray that you would continue to bless us in everything that we do. It's in Christ's name we pray. 
Amen. Our first song this morning will be number 25. Number 25. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere he leads me in this world below.
going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 53, starting in verse 1. Who has believed our report, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness, and when we see him, there is no beauty that we should des desire him. He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were we, we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this morning that we have to come and meet together and study your word, to sing songs of praise to you, and to glorify your name. Father, we pray that as we go through this service that we will do so in a manner that's pleasing to you and that we will learn more of your word, apply it to our lives, and show through our actions that we are Christians and people that are in the world can tell that they need to have you as we do by, your, by their side. Father, we do ask if you would to be with all those that we have that are sick, that have cancer, that are going through the virus, that have had to have surgeries due to accidents or just age. Father, please be with all of them. Heal them up if it's your will. Father, be with Brother Gary as he brings a lesson today. May we understand it precisely what he is saying. And please give him the wisdom and knowledge to continue to bring the word in the manner that he has been accustomed to. We ask, ask all of this in your son's name. Amen. Psalm before the lesson will be number 350. 350. And if you'd like to mark the Psalm of Encouragement, will be 376. If you would please stand. I'm satisfied with.
Good morning. It's a joy, joy to be here with all of you. We've got uh, some who are, we consider home folk that are with us today that are not always uh, able to be here. We're thankful for them being here. As you look around, you'll, you'll spot them at the conclusion services. We're thankful always to have our, have our family folks come back home and be, uh, be with us. But we're glad you're here. Uh, whether you go here all the time or whether you're uh, a member of the community, we're thankful you're here today. And we want to make you feel that way. Uh, if you'll give us an opportunity, we'll, we'll try to visit with you at the same time maintaining a reasonable distance, hopefully. Uh, and, uh, and hopefully you'll want to come back and be with us again. I think the longer I study Scripture, the more impressed I am with what Jesus did. I remember when I was at uh, Henderson, I was uh, effectively a uh, campus minister on a Christian college campus, which was an unusual thing in those days. Uh, And that meant that I got to visit a lot with the students. It also meant... I got a fair number of phone calls that would come at midnight or beyond. You know. And almost invariably, when, when I got one of those phone calls, it was from a student who'd been sitting down with other students. They'd been talking about uh, obedience to the gospel, and they'd come to the conclusion that maybe they, they didn't know what they were doing when they were baptized. They wanted to look at it again. <clears throat> we would sit and and talk. You know, I'd have to make sure the dorm mother knew I was coming, if it was a girl's dorm especially, and, uh, and make sure we followed all the, the correct procedures. But as we would talk, I'd say, well, tell me a little bit about why you were baptized in the first place. And invariably, they, uh, they knew why they were baptized, most of them. There were a few rare exceptions. They were baptized because they understood that they were a sinner. They understood they needed to repent. They understood their need for confessing uh, Jesus Christ and for being baptized. They understood all that. And I said, so what's the problem? I said, well, I, I just know so much more now. Well, that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> As we get older, we learn more. We grow And I have found that I'm growing in my understanding of Jesus. I don't think I'm there yet. Don't misunderstand me. But Isaiah's picture of Jesus that we began to look at last week is a powerful, powerful thing to look at. In just a few minutes, we're going to gather together around the Lord's table. We're going to eat of the bread and we're going to drink of the fruit of the vine. And as we do that, I hope that all of us are realizing what the cross was all about. He was rejected. That's basically the way that uh, Isaiah opens this whole thing up. Here was God come in the flesh, Emmanuel, God with us. People wouldn't have anything to do with him. He's rejected. He wasn't what they wanted. Didn't satisfy their thinking on what the Messiah ought to be. But he also was the suffering Savior. As we look at the suffering Savior as pictured by Isaiah, the very first thing that we will observe today is he carried our burdens. Look, look at the way Isaiah said it, and Tim did a great job. He, I appreciate him reading all six verses because that set the stage very well for us to look at this. Listen to him in verse 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Now, I want you, the word born there is the first one that I want to look at. It's talking about what Jesus did. And the word born here means to to lift. I I get a big kick out of watching uh, 
folks with, with new babies and those that are, have a baby already and they're expecting another one. It's fun to watch. Uh, uh, accidentally, I stumbled on a piece of information a few days ago. I'm not going to tell who, but uh, this individual had a lot of stuff that they were hauling around because they have a young child. And I said, uh, that's just going to get heavier. And she, she said, I know. I'm going to have another one in July. And I go, oh, I was talking about, you know, the older the child gets, the more junk you have to carry. That's what I was talking about. But, but you know, if you watch, you know, look at Camille and Dustin. Who hauls all, most of the stuff? Here comes, you know, Dustin in here hauling, hauling two, two different uh, carrying cases. I'm not getting the right word. Forgive me. But you know what I'm talking about. Here he is coming in with those. He may have a backpack on it. He got all that stuff, you know, that he's, he's carrying. Why? Well, you know, can you imagine Camille coming in holding two babies? And I, I can't. No offense, Camille. I just can't. That's a lot to handle. Well, think about it. We were bearing a burden of sin. It was a burden that we basically were crushed under. We couldn't get up. And Jesus came along and he lifted it. Isn't that a beautiful idea? When you look at the cross, you're looking at Jesus lifting our burden. It's interesting that he begins this verse, this verse 4, with the word surely. The word surely is a contrast. In the opening verses, how did people view Jesus? In verses 1 through 3, how did they view him? They viewed him as suffering because he deserved it. God's giving you what you deserve. That's the way people view But the word surely is a contrast. In contrast to what men thought about Jesus, the reality is he was lifting my load. He was picking it up for me, that which I could not pick up. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, the apostle Peter says, For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit. Now again, remember that surely idea. Men viewed Jesus as wicked. He deserved to die. When Peter comes along, he says, oh, no, no. He, this was the just suffering for the unjust. He was righteous, and that's the idea there. He was right with God. There's your word, just. In contrast to that, we were unjust. We were sinners. There is no one who reaches the age of accountability that does not sin. Let's remember that. Romans 3.10, we cite it very often for good reason. There's none righteous. No, not one. I'm not righteous. You're not righteous. Before you find Christ. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3 verse 23. Before I find Jesus Christ, I am short, falling short of God's glory. But Jesus came along to suffer for me, the unjust. As one who was just, so that I could be set free. Remember... In chapter 2, verse 22 of 1 Peter, the apostle Peter had already written, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. Find one thing Jesus ever did that violated the law of Moses. One. Can't be done. He lived exactly the way God directed. Therefore, He was worthy to die in our stead. That's the message that Isaiah is delivering, and for that matter, Peter is as well. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, the writer to those early Hebrew converts to Jesus Christ says this, So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many, 
To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. That word once is quite a contrast, isn't it? When you think about the law of Moses, how many sacrifices did they offer? Wow. Now, Teresa and I, in our Bible reading, just, just read through uh, the dedication of the temple by Solomon. And I may be not remembering exactly right, but I believe he offered 12,000 sheep. That's just the sheep. That doesn't count all the cattle, which there were numbers of them as well. Now, I realize that was a special occasion, but the reality is that there were sacrifices made every day under the law of Moses, over and over and over again. But Jesus came one time at the end of the ages to offer sin for mankind. And aren't we glad? It's because of that that we can look forward to the day when he comes again. Because he's going to finally set us free Give us the ultimate salvation in heaven. Go back to 1 Peter again, just briefly. Chapter 2, verse 24, and listen to what uh, he says there. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. When we look at the cross today, when we partake of the bread, and we think about that body, that tortured body that hung on that tree, remember, he did that because he was carrying my load. He took my burden. That's why he was at Calvary. The suffering Savior also was pierced for us. Now, you're going to have to look, go with me. Some of you will have translations that will solve this problem, but not all do. I, I, knew, I use New King James. It doesn't solve it. I have to, I have to sometimes look up a word or two uh, here or there. Listen to verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes... We are healed. Look at the word wounded there. The good news is the New King James in the margin straightens out the problem. They give an alternate reading and literally they say pierced through. He was pierced through. And that makes a difference there. Pierced through for my sins. Why did they drive the spikes, the nails into the hands of Jesus? Why did they drive the nails into the feet of Jesus? Again, men looked at him as being worthy of dying. And they made that very clear, didn't they? But the reality is that those nails were my nails. It's what I deserved. But he took it. He was pierced for me. Psalm chapter 22 is it's really a psalm that uh, if, if you read it and think deeply about what is going on there, if you're like me, you, tears may come to your eyes. This is the singer of Israel uh, looking down through the centuries. He basically is singing in large measure, out of the heart of the Messiah, the coming Redeemer. And as he does that, listen to a part of what he says about what it would be like for Jesus on the cross. For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. The book of John, John tells us about that. He's not the only one, but he probably gives us more details than any of the other writers do. Pick up at verse 31 of, of John chapter 19 and hear what he says about that day when Jesus hung on the cross. 
Therefore, because it was the preparation day, that the bodies should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day. The Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Now pause just a minute. There were two very important Sabbaths that were associated with the Passover. This is the latter one. And on this particular Sabbath day, it was a high holy day. It was a in some ways, a greater Sabbath. Why? Because it, it followed after they remembered the sacrificing of the lamb when they were coming out of Egypt. And you remember how they killed that lamb and they would, they would use the blood to paint it on the doorposts of their, of their houses. And because that blood was there, death passed over the houses where the Israelites were staying. Not so with the Egyptians. The firstborn of the, of the Egyptians, every one of them died. Well, knowing that that very special holy day was coming, they had to get the bodies, they had to get the, those people that were crucified off the crosses before 6 o'clock, because 6 o'clock at night, the, the Sabbath begins. And so the Jews went and insisted to the Roman authorities that they hurry up those deaths so they get those bodies off the crosses. And sure enough, they came to the first thief, he's still alive, they broke his legs. And just suffice it to say, that meant he wasn't going to be able to breathe anymore. I know that sounds funny, breathing with your legs, but by this time their chest muscles had frozen up and the only way to breathe was go up and down. When they'd push up on their feet, the diaphragm would, would pull in a little bit. When they let down, it would release. Air would go in and out that way. You break their legs, no more breathing. It's just that easy. Came to the first thief, they broke his legs. The second thief, they broke his legs. But listen... As John goes ahead and explains, then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. You know how important that is? John's going to tell us. Keep reading. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he's telling the truth so that you may believe. Jesus is already dead. Now, why is that important? Well, first of all, it's important because that's where the blood's going to be. You see, we're talking about the Passover. I know Jesus bled before, before they pierced his side. I understand that. He had a crown of thorns placed on his head. That likely brought forth some blood. He had been scourged. And it'd be a rare exception if there was no blood after scourging. But the vast amount of blood. You think about the Passover lamb. What did they do? They slit the throat of that lamb. They caught all the blood in a basin. That's how much blood it was. And they used that to make, you know, make that special mark on their doors that we talked about a few moments ago. When did Jesus shed a basin full of blood? I can tell you when. In his death, he shed a basin full of blood. You might say, well, <clears throat> what difference does that make? And that's a fair question, to be honest about it. And the answer has already been partly given by John. John said it was to fulfill Scripture. And that's what he's going to talk about in just a minute. But before we get to that, we have to realize what he was doing. He was offering his blood in our behalf. So John goes ahead in the next two verses, and he said, For these things were done, that the Scripture should be fulfilled, not one of his bones should be broken. And again, another Scripture says... They shall look on him whom they pierced. Now, if you're one of those people like me that likes to 
prowl around and find the Old Testament prophecy that says not one of his bones is going to be broken, you're in for an adventure. There's only one reference I can find that this possibly could be referring to. It's found in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verse 46. And what you'll remember what that is. That's the directions for the Passover sacrifice. The lamb that would be slain <coughs> so that death would pass over them. Now remember that. That's going to be important to us, isn't it? All right, listen to him. In one house it shall be eaten. That's the lamb. You shall not carry any of the flesh outside the house, nor shall you break one of its bones. Now, you may be sitting there shaking your head and saying, well, what's that got to do with Jesus? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 5. The Apostle Paul in verse 7 says, For indeed, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I think if I ask today for everybody that wants the second death, by the way, in Revelation chapter 20, at the end of the chapter, second death is described as hell. Everybody that does not want to go to hell, raise your, if I ask for that, I dare say everybody that's old enough and in their right mind is going to raise their hand, Right? I don't want to spend eternity in the fires of hell. I'm not interested. I don't think you are either. So listen carefully to what's going on here. When the Passover lamb was sacrificed, death passed over the houses of all the Israelites. When we submit to Jesus in baptism, the blood of Jesus makes our lives to where if we remain faithful, if we continue to walk in the light, then death, that is hell, is going to pass over me, so to speak. I'm going to survive. Is it important? Well, I say it is. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now the other passage that John referred to comes from the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10 where it simply says, then they will look on me whom they pierced. So everything that happened on the cross was foretold years before. I want you to imagine the impact of that. What if today we'd have handed out to you a newspaper that anticipated everything that was going to happen 400 years from the day and it didn't miss a single thing? What do you think about that? I want to know who wrote that article. I need to see that fellow. Is it time to buy bitcoins or not? You know, I want to meet that guy. Don't you? The Bible is clearly a book from God. Only God could have known every incident that would happen in the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And it's all there. Every bit of it. The suffering Savior was pierced for us. But then also, our iniquity fell upon Him. Look at verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That word laid there, literally translated is, has caused to land upon. <laughs> what really should have landed on me, landed on the Savior. And that happened on the cross. Now, why is that important to me? I gave you a reference in your outline to a verse that you're going to think is really, really out of place. Uh, it 
it is actually a statement that is made more than once in the book of Judges. I just chose one of those. Judges chapter 17, verse 6. And here's what the inspired penman said. In those days, there was no king in Israel. And every man did what was right in his own eyes. If I look back on my life before I became a Christian... That's a pretty accurate description, isn't it? Before we acknowledge the King Jesus Christ, we lived our lives doing what we thought was best. Look around you in the world. See if that's not true. Isn't that how the world lives today? Sure it is. Now, because of that kind of living... There's a lot that ought to fall on me. But at the cross, God caused it to fall on the Christ, the suffering Savior. In the book of Galatians, chapter 1, verse 4, it's because of that that the Apostle Paul writes, who gave himself for us that he might deliver us from this present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father. Please look at the opening of that verse, who gave himself for us. The word gave suggests something to me. It was voluntary. Every now and then, just like you, I read an article or I see maybe a news report in which it is reported that, well, oh, let's say a teacher that had a well-loved student that needed a, a kidney transplant. The teacher goes and talks to the doctors or whoever and, and then gives one of their kidneys so that that student can keep on living. That's voluntary. Nobody makes them do it. They do it because of love of the individual for whom they are sacrificing. Mothers have done it for daughters and for sons. Fathers have done it for daughters and sons. And it's done every now and then. Jesus on the cross didn't just do it for people that loved him and that he, he loved. He loved all of us. But we didn't all love him. We didn't all live like we were supposed to live, but nonetheless, he voluntarily took on him the role of sacrificing himself. Look at the book of John, John chapter 10. This is in the middle of what we usually call the I am statements of Jesus. And particularly now, he's talking about I am the good shepherd. And as he talks about the shepherd, notice verses 17 and 18. Therefore, my father loves me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This command I've received from my father. I think there's a question when we partake of the Lord's Supper that every person who's a member of the body of Christ ought to ask. If Jesus did not want to go to the cross, could he have stopped it? What's the answer? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, he told Pilate, look, if my kingdom were of this world, my disciples would fight. On another occasion, he said, I could call 12 legions of angels. I'm talking about about, what, 80,000 approximately? 80,000 angels? You think they could have handled it? I think they could have. I think they could have kept anybody from putting him on that cross. The sacrifice of Jesus was voluntary, but it wasn't voluntary because he was going to get something out of it. It was voluntary because you and I were going to get something out of it. 
The suffering Savior, when he went to the cross, carried my burden. But he didn't just carry my burden, he was pierced for me. And my iniquity fell on him. Now that's true. And interestingly enough, it's true for everybody. Jesus gave his life a ransom for all. Isn't that what Paul says, 1 Timothy chapter 2? Gave his life a ransom for all. There's not one individual that has ever walked the earth or walks the earth now who Jesus did not die for. But there are a whole host of them who are not going to know the benefits of that suffering Savior. Why? Because they never found the blood. It takes blood to make death. Read hell to pass over me. Jesus left that blood in his death. And the only way I'll ever find it is by putting him on in baptism. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Colossians chapter 2, really verses 11 through 14, if you want to read the whole context. And then there's something else we need to realize. Because almost everybody in here that's of the right age has been baptized. It doesn't stop there. I don't cease to need blood because I have found it the first time. It's for that reason that John, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from our sin, all sin, all unrighteousness is gone because of what he did. I fear too many of us live as if once we've been saved that we don't have to worry about it anymore. That's not true. I need the blood every day. And if I've strayed, I need to confess and come back home. That's what John goes on to say in verse 9. The suffering Savior hung on the cross for me and for you. Are you ready to take advantage of what He did? If so, come while we sing. But the
Shonda Freeman came forward this morning, and uh, I'd like to read what she uh, wrote to, for, to share this with the congregation, the church family this morning. She said, I need the prayers for strength and courage. My priority shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't be caring for those who are physically ill when there are those who are spiritually ill. Please pray for me as I fight this battle. Uh, we, I think we could all admit that we are not as spiritual and reach out to those that, uh, that need our help. Also, too, uh, Daryl gave me a note, and I'm going to include this in the prayer that I'd uh, offer to uh, in, uh, in behalf of Shonda. Uh, Josh Adkins, the nephew of Nan Cockroft, uh, will have both legs amputated above the knee on March the 25th. Uh, please pray for him and uh, his family and the medical professionals uh, tending to him. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, as we approach your throne of grace and mercy, we come thanking you for <clears throat> that precious blood that was shed on the cross for us. And our Father, as we <clears throat> search our hearts and we search our goals in life, sometimes we're interrupted and we're distracted by the things that are around us and the things that we do and the things that we care for and Sometimes we fail to reach out to those who are spiritually ill, and Chandra comes forward this morning at just admitting, and I think that we all can admit that we fall short of your expectations of what you expect us to do as far as reaching out to those who are spiritually ill. So, Father, that we pray that you would forgive her as she's asked for also the courage to stand up and to take advantage of the opportunities that uh, pass by her each day of her life, and us too as we reach out to the lost community. Father, we thank you for your Son and our Savior who shed that blood upon the cross where as we go back and as we, as again Gary said in his lesson, we go back and we search ourselves and to help understand how all this happened and how we can have a relationship with you through your Son in our Savior Jesus Christ, and we thank you so much for that love. And Father, we offer up a special prayer for the young man Josh Atkins as uh, he is about to go under uh, to uh, through a surgery that is um, complicated, and we pray that as the medical professionals that are dealing with him uh, uh, might be able to be aware of all the things that are going on in his body as they work together and watch the monitors and and just uh, the, the, scourge, the surgeon's skill, and we pray that each one of those people involved in his uh, procedure will uh, be successful, and so that he can, uh, can he, so that he can be saved from the things that are um, uh, going on in his body. Father, we also pray that you would continue to be with this young man as uh, the rehabilitation is going to be long and hard and difficult after the surgery is done. We just pray that you not only be with him, but be with those who are his support team, so that as he begins the rehabilitation process, they can say the things that would encourage him and motivate him to do just a little bit more so that he can regain some of his abilities so that he can be uh, a good uh, citizen in our communities. Father, we come to you at this time in, in prayer, and we know that as you listen to us and as you Hear us as we pray together and as we search our, our hearts to help out those who are in need. Thank you so much for listening to us, and we thank you for being our Father, and we thank you for our Son and our Savior, who is our mediator to you from us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. To help prepare our minds for Lord's Supper this morning, We'll sing 283, 283. Jesus, keep me here.
Gary has just spent about 30 some odd minutes preparing our minds for the Lord's Supper. But he did leave me just a little bit of opening in there. And I want to read to you in Matthew chapter 26, starting in verse 36. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him Peter and Peter and the son, two sons of Zebedee, and began to be grieved and distressed. And then he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch with me. And he went a little beyond them and fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet, not as I will, but as yours. And later on in verse 42, he said he went away the second time and prayed, saying, My Father, if this cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will will be done. He knew. He knew exactly what he was fixing to go through. But he did it anyway. And he did it for us. That we can be saved. Let's pray together. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that we can gather around the table and partake of this remembrance of you. We pray, Father, as we take of this bread that we'll remember the cross. We pray, Father, that we'll be able to reflect on our own lives and look at the things that we need to, to give up, to sacrifice, to become part of you and to live in the light. We just thank you, Father, so much for this opportunity that you've given us to be a part of this. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we know that the blood that was shed on the cross saved us. We thank you, Father, that you, uh, you did that for us. We pray, Father, as we partake of it now, we'll reflect on that. And again, Father, we'll reflect on our lives to know that uh, the precious blood is life and you gave that to us. So we'll have eternity with you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a couple of more announcements before we have our closing song and prayer. Uh, please get one of the handouts and make sure that you refer to that during the week so that uh, those uh, that are uh, asked for prayers, uh, you can address those uh, and other things. If you've not uh, have uh, uh, all the, the, uh, the things that you need to com be communicated, whether it be a bulletin, your, the realm application of those text or telephone or whatever, uh, make sure that you... Uh, those of you that are listening online especially uh, uh, take care of that, that need. Uh, March the 16th, which will be Tuesday uh, morning, will be the early risers at 7 o'clock downstairs in the fellowship hall. Uh, we always have a good turnout for that and enjoy that. Uh, <clears throat> youth, remember the, uh, there's in the handout today there's some things, activities going on there. Refer to that to, uh, to, uh, to, so that you can attend to those things. Also, Charles Bracey has a mowing schedule. If you're on a mowing schedule of some kind and have not been handed a schedule this morning, he's got them back there. There's, I think there's some back on the, on the table in the foyer. And so uh, pick up one of those so that you'll uh, know when to, uh, to come to the building to, uh, to keep our, our yard and our uh, landscape <clears throat> pretty. 
Also this afternoon, the last leaders will be having two activities. The, uh, at 4 o'clock, the speech and oral Bible reading, and also at 4.30, uh, the song leading and song of praise uh, this afternoon, too. Uh, Derek and Hannah is trying to, uh, to get uh, everybody's photos, and so if you haven't seen them and getting a, uh, a picture taken so we can post it on a fo foyer uh, for that, uh, for that uh, please uh, take care of that today. If you're all dressed up and pretty this morning, that would be a good time to do that. So, uh, Shonda gave me this note, too, and wanted to, to read also this note. He said, she says, we're currently uh, working to clean and organize the clothing area downstairs, and we ask that, uh, that there be no clothing donations at this time until further notice. Uh, if anyone would like to help this week to organize clothing, see uh, Shonda uh, Freeman. Uh, I've, uh, the, the coronavirus has kept us from doing some of the things she does as far as handing out uh, those clothing uh, 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 opportunities. And so uh, right now we have enough. And so uh, if you're willing to help her, just uh, see her and, and she'll, uh, she'll put you to work. Our closing song list number will be in our folders, number B1. B1. If you would, please stand. A contributions uh, and those are there some some boxes in the back of the auditorium also those that may want to uh, mail a check or give online through the realm act uh, you can do so that way so let's pray together most gracious and loving heavenly father we're so thankful that we had this opportunity to come together and study your word we thank you father that as christians we can come and fellowship with each other and encourage each other and and go our ways and, and be like those before us and teach others in any way we can around us. Help, Father, to give us the strength to, uh, to be able to, to talk about you to, to strangers, to people we know and people we love, and help us to, uh, uh, to, to bind us all together. We pray, Father, that you'll help us all to come back this evening. Help us, Father, as uh, those that may be traveling, keep them safe. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.